me. So hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, I'm Adam Leipzig. It is a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. In today's webinar, we are going to walk through what you will be experiencing if you come to join us in Communications Excellence, the special edition which we have, which we have crafted for COVID-19 lockdown, quarantine, meetings on Zooms, WebExes, Microsoft Teams, and everything else that we have to do right now with all of the same toolkit that you would get if we were live and in person, plus, plus, plus what we need to do right now within the four corners of the Zoom room or the YouTube live stream that we're in right now. And hello to everybody on Zoom. Hello to everybody on YouTube live stream, which is our overflow room because this webinar has been uh, beautifully and uh, wonderfully oversubscribed. I think that so many people now realize the need that we have to find ways to communicate effectively, powerfully, crisply with passion, purpose, and absolute clarity in this video medium that we all must communicate in right now. It's great to see everybody here. And we have a pretty wonderful group of people. It's my co-faculty uh, who are going to be with us today in this webinar. May I tell you a story? Looking at the chat room for, yes, I can tell a story, fantastic. At five o'clock in the morning, the phone rang, just like this phone. And even though Penny had been up late at night and wasn't really ready to answer the phone, because she's a pro, she answered the phone. And on the other end of the phone, the stage manager said, you are going on tonight. Penny was understudying one of the roles in Angels in America, but if you know that Pulitzer Prize winning play, you know that there is not just one role, that every actor plays five or six or seven roles. And one of the things that you may not know is that when you are understudying, you do not actually get to rehearse on the stage in the costumes with the other actors. Instead, you have to watch and figure out how you exit stage right as one character, do a fast costume change as you're crossing from stage right to stage left backstage and come back on stage as a completely different character. Penny did that, hit her marks every night to standing ovations that night, the next day's matinee, the next evening's performance. Penny Kreitzer is an extraordinary and internationally acclaimed actor. And she has also coached executives at every level from Fortune 50 companies to startup companies. She's helped people appear on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, in front of congressional hearings. She's prepared CEOs and members of the executive committee for board meetings and high level pressure discussions. And it's my pleasure today to introduce you to my friend and my co-faculty, Penny Kreitzer. Penny, over to you. Thank you, Adam. A young boy goes through junior school, middle school, high school, and he is the top student. He gets the highest marks. Now there's something very interesting about this young boy. And that is that he never speaks in class. He never puts up his hand to ask a question and he never answers a question. And there's a very good reason for that. Richard has a debilitating stutter and he knows, he's learned from the time he was a little kid, he knows how the other kids are going to respond when he starts to speak. Now he has been to speech therapy, but it hasn't done that much. When he comes to first year college, he is told that that first year, you have to get involved in public speaking. And Richard being who he is, he decides to meet this challenge head on and he decides he's going to speak on what it is like to have a stutter. He is a resounding success. He wins first prize in that year. And then being 
the man that he is, Richard doesn't allow what might have been his losing edge. He doesn't allow that com to come into play. He makes that losing edge into his winning edge. And he graduates his doctorate from university and he has chosen the pedagogy of teaching, learning, language and persuasion. At UC Berkeley, he first heads up the Center for Teaching and Learning, and his job is to work with professors, top professors, to bring their teaching and the presentation of their classes up to par, and he works with a dean or two as well. He's published many, many articles on his specialty. He's invited all over the world, although now he can't go, obviously. And Richard now heads up curriculum design and development at Executive Education at the Haas School of Business. It is my pleasure to introduce to you my friend and colleague, Dr. Richard Freistadt. Thank you, Penny. An executive at Disney in charge of developing scripts and supervising production a first draft script came to Adam and Adam alone. It was a remake of a French film, a family film near and dear to his heart called Paradise. Fast forward, it's Monday morning, 7.45 a.m. And as the executives at Disney did every Monday morning at this time, they filed into the executive boardroom. And in the 40 seats around that long boardroom table sat at the head, Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg, who were running Disney Studios at the time. And in descending order of importance down that long side of the table, sat at the far opposite corner, Adam. And standing around the outside of the room were your post-production affairs specialists, business specialists, and so forth. This was, my friends, a room of hierarchy and a room of power. And the first thing every Monday morning started with was Jeffrey Katzenberg pulling out the list of scripts that came in the week before. And if there's one thing Jeffrey did not like, it was a script he had not already seen. So as he reviewed this list of, this list of scripts, he gets to one that doesn't look familiar. It's called Paradise. And he sees the name next to it is Adams. And so Jeffrey looks up from the script and he leers down the long table at Adam and he says, well, Adam, did paradise come in? How was it? And you've got 10 seconds, maybe 10 seconds in this moment to be calculated because you better be interesting, you better be funny, you better be compelling, you better be dynamic, you better be one or all of those things in those 10 seconds because if you are not, Jeffrey will shut you down in front of that entire room and that's good for no one's career or self-esteem. And so Adam looked up and he said, I have two words to say about it, period, stop. And he just stopped and he waited. And he purposefully waited long enough that it forced Jeffrey to lean in and say, well, what are they? To which Adam calmly responded, make it. Disney had never made a first draft script until Adam made Paradise, with wh which went on to great critical acclaim and success. Today, Adam is CEO of Entertainment Media Partners, where he advises media companies and companies that need media strategies. He's publisher of Cultural Weekly, former president of National Geographic Films, and senior vice president at Disney Studios. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Leipzig. Richard, I have two words to say to you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, here's what we're going to do today. It's brilliant. Uh, it's brilliant for everybody to be here. Uh, we hope that you will come and join us in our class at Berkeley next week. And even if you cannot, in, this, in the next 45 minutes, we're going to give you some immediately actionable tricks, tools, tips, techniques that you can use right now to up your game in the Zoomiverse. Penny is going to do a few things. Richard's going to do a few things. I'm going to do a few things. Then, uh, as time permits, we're going to have time for some Q&A, uh, and then we'll tell you a little bit more about the, uh, the program itself, which begins next week. 
If you have questions as we go, we probably will not be able to get to all of them, but we'll try to get to as many as we can. Down at the very, very bottom of your screen, there's something that says Q&A. Not the thing that says chat, the thing that says Q&A. And the thing that says Q&A, please write any questions you have, and I'll moderate that as we go, and we'll try to do as many questions as we can. Penny, over to you. The danger, and I'm gonna hit it right on the head, of remote communication is that we all become more remote. We have Zoom fatigue, sitting here for hours, which causes us to start to slump and to go down and to talk like this and mumble and then nobody knows what you're talking about and everybody gets utterly bored to death, including yourself. Now, we are the medium through which our message is going to be delivered. I like to call it through which our message is going to land. 93% of successful and impactful communication depends on your presence, which dictates how you breathe and therefore how you think and also your voice, the tone of your voice, and the way that you use language. I'm going to teach you a method of working on language. It derives from the neuroscience of language. And what it will do is it will help you to energize your language by choice, deal with nerves, get rid of those terrible ums and ums and so's, that will go. For people who have a strong accent, and I know people come from all over the world, it will help you to cut through that accent and become clear. Somebody who has a very soft voice, it will help your voice to become fuller. I will tell you a little secret right now, even though I can't see any of you, my voice used to be like this, believe it or not. I'm from South Africa and that's how I used to speak. So the technique works. <laughs> the work is active and it's empirical and it's efficient. The other skill set that I'm going to teach you is called the five point centering. This enables you to be always on your energy. I call it being on your presence because you will be breathing. You will have done something with your mind. It's all done with the mind to get yourself into that energy place so that you can sustain an hour, another hour. And if you take a break and you go off where you're allowed to flop around and have coffee and all that sort of thing, you can come back on and be exactly where you need to be. Now, these techniques, are ones that I've developed as a result of having been a professional actress, where I had to be able to show up all the time, every time, no matter what happened, no matter what was going on in my life. And I had to be there always. And it's my technique and nobody else teaches it, but I teach it at executive education at the Haas School of Business. So if you are at all interested in working with me, please, please, please hurry up, sign up, and I will see you next week. Thank you. Penny, before we kick it over to Richard, um, you, you said that 93% of the information that we get is by presence. Could you just talk about that for another moment? What's, what, how does that break out and what is the extra 7%? The extra 7% are the words. So you have to have fantastic words, which is why you're going to be working with Richard and Adam. Nothing can be redundant, it's got to be concise. The language chosen for the most impact. Very, very important. You can't just ramble around. Going to be, I need to get to yes, this is the, these are the words I'm going to use. This is the language. But if your presence is not there, 
if you're sitting like this, or if you're, you know, down like this, whatever you say is going to be impacted by that. No, and you're going to find in my session that you're not even able to think when you're in this place. I teach um, three centers of influence. I'm not gonna go into them right now because that's what you're gonna get when you come to our workshop. But we are sometimes in circle one, which is the victim, and you heard as a victim, no matter how fantastic your script is. The circle two is where you want to be centered. It's where I am now. And circle three is when you are in the place of, it's all about me, you know, it's all about me. And the presence actually changes the way your voice sounds. Mm. So, sig so significant, so important. Because we work so hard to practice those, that 7% the words, we try to memorize our scripts to get the words right. And they're important, but there's this other 93% that we need to land in order to be effective. Richard, before I kick it over to you, there's just a couple questions I'm going to answer as we go. For people who are curious, the course is next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, August 12, 13, 14. On the 12th and the 14th, the Wednesday and the Friday, it's going to meet from 8.30 in the morning Pacific until 3.30 in the afternoon Pacific. And then on the Thursday, there will be individual office hours with Richard and Penny and me, each one at a time. The, uh, the hours that we've stated are actually live hours when you're actually with us or in breakout groups. And this is a highly experiential course. There's a lot of practice. In fact, we encourage you to come with something that you need to pitch, something you need to get a yes for, so you can really make it excellent by the time we're done with that course. And uh, by the time, and we also do offer a certificate, you will get a certificate of completion when you're done. And there is also some pre-recorded material, some videos and some readings uh, that you will get in addition to it. Uh, I do want to say though, that in those uh, six or seven hours that I stated, uh, our time, it's not just staring at the Zoom stream, Zoom screen. There are breaks and there's breakout sessions, so we keep it pretty active and lively. Um, Richard, active and lively, those are your keywords. I'm kicking it over to you. Sounds great, Adam, thank you. So the one big idea I wanted to talk about today, um, I think is really foundational to everything that we teach in the program, particularly as we think about the parts of communication excellence that I'll focus on with you in the class. And that really comes down to what are the words I'm using? What is the logic? What is the organizational strategy I'm going to come up with and develop that is going to allow me to flexibly execute my message, deliver my message in a way that's going to resonate with a particular audience that I have in mind that I have to deliver for, right? And so, in the program, you will learn tools, but these tools are built upon a foundation. And in every program we have ever taught, one question has come up again and again and again. And it's something like this. Yeah, I, these tools are great, but I'm being put in a situation where I need to talk about something and I just, I just don't know all the answers. And every time this comes up, you'll see Adam smiling and laughing a little bit as I say this, we reply with the same thing and that is, be the expert. You absolutely must be the expert on whatever it is you are talking about, about that message itself. And this is foundational because the tools we teach and the things we learn around how to communicate excellent, whatever that means for you, are not tools that will mask lack of expertise. They're not tools that will hide the ability to answer tough questions about it. These are actually tools that are going to bring your expertise to life and help it become revealed and help your decision makers and colleagues trust you, believe in you, and be inspired by you. And so it all is premised on this foundation. So number one, do not say yes to any communication opportunity that you are not the expert on or become the expert before you're in the situation where you are speaking on it. That's just full nonstop non-negotiable right there. Nothing will hurt your political capital more than getting up and delivering a message where it is clear you do not know everything you're talking about. And we're talking about at every level of depth and breadth. As best you can, you need to be the expert. But I wanna offer a nuanced point to this because we all can't always be experts on everything and in every context. 
And I want to give a really short anecdote of a situation that actually happened with us in a program about two or three years ago. We were working with a small group from an organization and they were preparing to do a group presentation. And they were representing different departments of the organization that had to share a single product strategy. And I remember at one point, one of the group members looking very disengaged and kind of going over and catching him, pulling him aside and saying, what, what's going on? And he was really expressing fr frustration. And he said, I, I, I wanna be a part of this team. I really like my colleagues a lot. I believe in this product. I believe in the strategy, but strategy just isn't my area of expertise. And I just, I, I don't feel like I have a lot to contribute. And so as we talked through it more, what we realized was this gentleman happened to be from finance. And while he might not have been heavy into sort of product strategy previously, he had some really strong expertise from the financial perspective that he could lend to the group's presentation on this topic that would answer a lot of tough questions, get out in front of things that were gonna have financial repercussions. And all of a sudden he saw how his expertise in the perspective on the topic gave him an avenue through which to speak authentically about it. What did he do? He got re-engaged, he got back with his team. They found exactly the point of the presentation he should take and it was about numbers, projections and return on the investment that they wanted for the strategy itself. Ended up being wildly successful all because he saw, maybe I'm not the operations expert, but from this perspective on this topic, I can speak with expertise and that can make me authentic and that's gonna help my message land and use the tools and strategies to resonate with my audience. Come to the class, learn those tools to build on top of that foundation of expertise you have. Adam, back to you. Hey Richard, thank you so much. You know, you, you, know, you mentioned earlier that, uh, that I have a background in the film and entertainment business. What we really do is tell stories. We tell stories that bind people together, that engage people emotionally, that, uh, that we hope have people coming back for more. And the stories that we tell have extraordinary power. They have the power to shape lives, shape cultures, um, cause people to fall in love, cause people to appreciate each other at a deeper and more emotional way. One of the things that we will work on together in this program is how we tell stories. And I just saw a question come in. Um, do you think that creating emotional impact in your audience affects the delivery of your com communication? If so, how? Martin, yes, because we actually make decisions at an emotional level. Even in the most data-driven companies, even if you are an engineer and a data scientist and you believe that you make decisions on a data-driven level, uh, and I'm sorry, and with great respect for everything you do, actually, you don't or you don't entirely, because we all know that you can shape data and you can scan data, read it in a different way to achieve the results and the answer you want. Human beings make decisions first at an emotional level, and then within microseconds, nanoseconds, if we are a data-driven person or if we feel that we are in a data-driven ecosystem, we will retroactively figure out the reason why the data supports the emotional decision that we have just made. And put in the chat bar something, if you've ever been in a company where you've seen a CEO make an emotional decision that you didn't agree with because you knew the data was wrong, but you, <laughs> you knew that it happened that way. So how do we do that? How do we get to the emotional core? We do it through storytelling. And we do it through the figure of the hero. Now, there's not really one hero, there are two heroes. Let's talk about those two heroes. There's an obvious hero whenever you are making a pitch. When I use the word pitch, I mean whenever you need to get someone to say yes to somebody, something. It may not be a formal pitch. It may not be where you're going into a room and pitching a project, a new idea, a new budget line item, something for the team. It could just be that you need to get someone to say yes or your team, your group, your client to say yes to something. I consider that a pitch, something where you need to get someone to say that magic word of yes. So there's a hero and the hero is what it is you are trying to get your interlocutor to say yes to because that hero solves a problem. And the problem in the story, in the narrative arc is the villain. 
The problem is the bad guy. The problem is the challenge that needs to be overcome. And there are a lot of ways of introducing the hero, but always that hero is the thing that you need to get people to say yes to. And the hero that I've just described, the thing that you need to get people to say yes to is only one of the two heroes, and actually it is the second most important hero. The first most important hero in anything that you are pitching, anything that you are trying to get a yes for, is you. You are the hero. You are the hero of your life, of your story. You are the hero of your narrative. And when people say yes, they are saying yes to you. They're saying yes to you because you have found a way to connect emotionally, intellectually, psychologically, psychically, because you have found a way to connect in a way that they understand, that you speak in a language they understand, that you interact with them even in, within the four walls of the screen we're on right now, on Zoom or YouTube Live, even within these four walls with a presence, as Penny just spoke about, in a way that they can say, Yes, I feel comfortable with this person. I want to say yes to this person. And this person therefore has credibility and the hero that he's speaking of, which will solve the problem, which will vanquish the villain, which will kill the dragon, which will make the land verdant and beautiful again. That is a hero I want to say yes to because I like the hero who is speaking to me right now. And that's something that we will work on together um, in our program. Now, I'm going to, we have some time for, we have some time for questions and we're going to go to questions uh, in a moment. And there's actually some great questions um, and Richard and Penny, I'm going to sort of kick them and, and pass them around because as we address these questions, we'll also get at some of the other areas of the program that we do together. Uh, I do want to let everybody who's watching know that we have engineered this program very specifically so you can be the star in the Zoom. So you have the tools and techniques to really land in the medium that we have to be in right now. Uh, and it's, it's so vital because whether we come out of lockdown next week, next month, or next year, there will be times we know we will be going back into lockdown again. And we also know that the business climate has changed. Business has been hurt economically. There is not gonna be as much travel. We're not gonna be getting on airplanes, even if it is safe to fly, even if it is safe to stay in hotels, even when that happens, there's gonna be a real modality of shifting away from having to travel for physical interactions and moving towards this kind of virtual interaction. So it's an essential part of your business toolkit. So here is, here's a great question that just came in. Um, Richard, I'm gonna start with you on this one, please. Mm -hmm. Could you comment on how best to chair board meetings? Okay, and we're now in a board meeting in that room with a long table or in the Zoominar with a half dozen or a dozen little tiles that we're looking at, right? Could you, how best to chair a board meeting of nine directors and three executives to optimize inputs from all and derive consensus outcomes effectively? And I will add to this that of the nine directors and three executives, they all care about different things, but you have to talk to them at the same time. Richard, how do you do that hat trick? Yeah, so in terms of not just sort of chairing the board meeting, but in terms of the message you need to deliver in that board meeting to all those different decision makers, it, it, it's really what Adam said. First thing you need to do is start from where they are. And one of the sort of core foci in the, this program is you'll hear us say over and over again, it's not about you. It's not about you, it's not about you. And as much as we're working on you, it's about how you are going to connect with them, right? So your intention is what do these 12 different individuals need to hear about whatever this is, to understand it, to appreciate it, to give a sense to whatever it is I'm asking for, right? So I need to understand my audience. I need to diagnose how they make decisions are they data driven? Are, do they get excited about some, some reality that isn't here yet? Are they competitively driven? How do we stay ahead of somebody else? All of those factors need to be taken into consideration so that I can do two things. I can use a tool in the program that we call the ladder of abstraction that will enable you to number one, diagnose what each of those different people needs and how I can segment my yeah. message to give them each a taste of that but also to understand how those different needs might layer 
vertically along a ladder of abstraction around the same topic. That same topic has levels of depth and detail, as well as it has levels of abstract impact. It might further our mission in some ways, just as much as it might cost us $2 million and four headcount each year. And my ability to connect those data points up and down give me the ability to deliver a part of my message to every possible decision maker in the audience. Excellent. Uh, you know, while we're, um, uh, you know, while we're talking, and I also have this other feed coming in, uh, some people are saying, how do I sign up? Jen, when you have a chance, would you mind just putting into the chat box for everyone the URL for enrolling in the program if people are interested? Um, and, uh, and meanwhile, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to a, a, pointy, a, penny, a, a question. Penny, this one's for you, if I may. Um, how do you see communicating in person and over Zoom? Are they going to involve? Are they going to involve into the same thing or are they going to be different? Actually, the technique is the same, the same technique. The only thing is that on Zoom, you are missing things like the immediate connection, the flow in the room, feeling the other people, which means, and feeling their responses, which means our skills actually for Zoom have to be even sharper. And we cannot afford, you know, it's when, when you're on camera, you know, if you go like this, you know, everybody notices it immediately. But you might not also notice that when you're in a group and everybody is standing around. Um, we figured out a way for what we normally do in person to work on Zoom. We find actually that the chat rooms um, produce better partnership coaching than sometimes when people are told, you know, go off go off and then they go off and they've gone and they're on their phones and they're doing other things. So there are some wonderful things that really work for us um, on Zoom. Yeah, and you know, I think it also, it also means that we, not only is it harder for us to read the room, but we have to be conscious about how we are being read. Because if we're, um, you know, if we're doing our emails, like this, everybody knows that we're doing our emails and we're not really focusing on what's going on, which is a problem, but we get caught out. And if we are distracted, we get caught out. And we also have to be conscious of what's going on behind us and is there enough light on our face? Something we never had to think about before, but actually this very basic thing is, is there enough light on my face that you can see me? Makes a huge difference in terms of how we connect with each other um, in, in the Zoom environment. Um, Penny, another question for you. This is from the live stream about the, you talked about the three points, but this person asked, does it, does it connect with the chakras in yoga, yoga traditions, or is that something? It's, that's, you know, I, it, it might, but I tend to say when you're speaking, you're not doing yoga. You know, a lot of people think that yoga breathing comes into uh, speaking. So you will get people who are, let's say, nervous, and they're talking, and then the next thing they're going is, you know, we, we don't, it's a different kind of breathing. So I, I, I talked about the three circles of influence. For now, let's leave yoga away from speaking. Because when you are speaking, you are activating the breathing and thinking. Breath and thought go together in a different way. And it's not for you to relax the breathing that you will get from the five-point centering allows you to drop into the lower breathing area, which allows you to relax, but with energy. So that is my answer. Yeah, and, and as someone who has practiced yoga himself for 30 plus years, uh, it, yoga is very helpful in centering me as a person, but it's very different from what we do in this class. And it's very different from what we do when we're present, uh, except to the extent that if yoga gives us physical, an ability to be physically grounded, that's always a good thing. And that just helps us be ourselves more and more of our, more our authentic self. Let, Let me just add one thing. Please go ahead. What it does is if you're doing yoga, you are going to be more aware of your body. 
and your body in space. And you're going to be able to visualize because the way that I work is uh, through the imagination. You cannot put my hand down your throat to move your vocal cords in a certain way. It's got to come through the imagination. So in that sense, it's good. Okay, um, so let me, uh, uh, again, just sort of scanning, scanning the various chat bars and, and also this. Let me just answer some questions on the fly as we go, and then we'll pick up some more Q&A. The dates for the program next week, again, are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday and Friday are from 8.30 Pacific a.m. Pacific time to 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. There's lunch breaks. There's other breaks. There are breakout sessions. On the Thursday, which is the 13th of August, there are in separate individual live uh, office hours with Richard, Penny, and me. And the session times that I just described on Wednesday and Friday are live, uh, both with you and your other participants in uh, larger and smaller groups and with a lot of practice, a lot of experience. Someone asked if there are future dates. Uh, there are future dates that we have already set in February, and there may be some other dates coming uh, uh, coming that we have not yet announced. Uh, but for now, we have this program in, uh, in August, and we have this program in, um, in February. Uh, Richard does have a, a, slot, a, a, a slide of the schedule, right? Richard, this might be a great time to put it up, uh, just to take a few minutes to talk through the schedule with people. Uh, and you may want to make your screens large enough to see this. Richard, would you uh, do a few minutes just to explain what we're going to be doing together? Absolutely. So as we pivoted the design of the program for the online modality, we wanted to give you a sense of kind of start to finish what the flow is and why we've organized it the way we have. And so as I talk this through, I'm going to invite Adam and Penny to j jump in with any comments as well. But obviously, we're moving left to right and top to bottom along the schedule here. The program does have pre-work. Um, we have compiled some articles and some blog pieces authored by us ourselves. We have recorded some short videos for you and really tried to give you a lot of um, content up front, a lot of the foundational principles around some of the tools or te techniques for you to do up front. As Adam alluded to as well, this program really works best when you have something you want to work on, something that's real, that you're gonna be doing back in your job, back in your organization in the next 30 to 60 days. And we will be asking you to start thinking about that as part of the pre-program work. We'll get a baseline and see how we improve along the way. One of the rationales behind the pre-work being as it is for this version itself is because we are in the Zoomiverse, we've essentially tried to flip the classroom. We've moved, moved as much of content delivery outside of our time together synchronously so you can consume that information. And then when we come into the Zoom room together, we could really get to work. And that's what would bring us to August 12th, Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. First session begins with Penny beginning to work with you around those tools of the body, the breath, the presence, learning the five points really getting into your bodies. We, as, as Penny says so well, from the outset, we need to get everybody out of their heads and into their bodies. And this is the first chance and the first opportunity we have to do that. During the break and during other times, we will have you watch some video clips and things like that. You'll see examples of people doing things very well. You'll see examples of people doing things very poorly. And all of these are meant to be illustrative for you to see how the tools we teach come to life in different ways, in ways harnessed for success, and when people don't use them, how we see uh, failures arise in the communication space. Uh, the second half of the morning on day one, we will finish up a little bit of work around the art of medium science of the message, the body, breath, and presence work with Penny before we transition to get some practice with two tools that Adam and I will be teaching you. One is the five questions, which is a focusing tool, and the second being the ladder of abstraction, which is about how do you figure out your organizational strategy for delivering this message for this audience with this desired result in this context. And we're going to have a lot of time to work on it as a whole group, but then put you in small groups to actually build out those tools for that pitch, that presentation, that message you're actually going to be delivering after the program at some point. We then will take a nice break 
for lunch before coming back in the afternoon where Adam will lead us through a session on storytelling. You heard him talk about that up at the front of the webinar here. And it's really gonna work us through the anatomy of a narrative itself and understand how stories not only can, can function by themselves, but can function as a way to structure our message to make it memorable and to make it have impact. Now, in this online version, we have an additional day two. Usually we're two days back, back to back. Because we're online, we have this day on Thursday, August 13th in between. And what we've added in here is this day for two reasons. Number one, you're gonna be working on that actual pitch, that actual thing you need to do back in the office. And this now gives you a full day between learning the tools and having to start really delivering it and putting it into practice to start to shape your message itself. And we think this will be a huge benefit for a lot of people because the practice is what really helps move you further faster. The other piece of this day is there's an optional hour with each of us to go deep on different topics of interest for you. So an hour with Penny in the morning where if you have additional questions or wanna be engaged in further conversation and understand more about presence, body, breath, there's a space to do that to sit with Adam and talk about storytelling and, and really the corporate real politique of what it means to be delivering messages in that boardroom or whatever the context might be. And finally, an hour with me where we can look at things like our organizational strategy, how to use the ladder of abstraction and something else that will be a part of your pre-work or a resource. How do we think about PowerPoint? <laughs> PowerPoint hasn't gone away in the Zoomiverse and it's really not gonna go away anytime too. And one of the things you'll see in the video that I've created and in this conversation that we can have is really talking about what are the science, the scientific principles behind attention, focus and memory that can help us design and deliver our slides that will have impact. Then we come back day three, our final day of the program. We get started right away in the morning get you warmed up, a few more tools around body, breath, presence, before we spend some time focusing on what, what is a key takeaway of the program. Not just refining your own message, but learning how to coach others and be coached. And so in this session in the morning on day three, you will have opportunities where a few people will have a chance to be coached by Adam Penny and I, as well as then the whole group giving some feedback. So really, how do we learn how to coach and refine? We'll take a little break, we'll come back. Penny will teach you another exercise and tool that will really help with the clarity of your voice and your voice coming out before we'll get back into groups to do a final practice and refinement of that pitch. After lunch, we come back to close out the program. We're in final groups your final presentation, your final culmination of now a three-day experience where when you came in with just a rough draft or idea of this message you need to deliver, now you are leaving with something polished and ready to go and with the tools to continue to practice, polish, and refine. We close the program and off you go to apply all of the learnings for your success. Adam and Penny, anything you want to add to the curriculum and flow of this re redesign? Uh, yes, but let's stop sharing the screen because it dovetails with one of our, one of the questions that just came in. Uh, there was a question that just came in from uh, Vishnu Priya, which is, uh, to be effective, it takes a lot of practice in three days, basically. Can you really make a difference in three days? Um, Vishnu Priya, yeah. There is, there are light years of difference from when you begin to when you end. And we have done this multiple times and the, uh, the results and the self-assessment of results are staggering. People leave this program more confident, stronger, clearer. Uh, they get promotions, they change jobs, they achieve more yeses in their lives. Now, are you, are you as good as you're ever gonna be after three days? No, because this is a, uh, this is a, a practice of continuous practice, like yoga, like golf like anything that you do, uh, playing piano, like anything you do in life, you don't get it after three days. But after three days, you will have the tools to continue to practice. And you will also probably make some friends that you can continue to practice with and continue getting better and better and better. So yes, there is a significant difference that we see. And it's the reason that this is one of the most popular and successful programs that executive education runs 
and why, uh, why we keep doing it because we love to see the changes that happen with people. Um, you know, everybody's time is, uh, is very valuable. And for those of you on Zoom and those of you on YouTube live stream, your time is valuable too. Um, uh, we were doing a little bit of offline chat while this was going on and while Richard was asking that last question. And um, we, we, just, uh, we just decided that we, we want to give everybody who's here now 10% off if they want to uh, come and join us in the class. I'm going to put a code here in the chat bar for everybody to everybody. Let's see, to everybody. There we go. Uh, I put a special code, and the code is COMEX10, C O M M E X 1 0. So if you decide that you want to register, if you decide this is for you, uh, you can get 10% off. Um, when uh, when you when you do that, okay. Here is thank you for the various compliments that have come in. We very much appreciate it. Um, here is a question from Pratik in the Zoo, in the YouTube live stream. Pratik asks, and Richard, may I give this to you to start with? Um, how does a company's a company or an industry culture impact the ways communicating effectively uh, when you're communicating to hierarchy and management? It's a really, really insightful question. And it's one we get every single time we teach the program. Um, there are two parts of the answer to that question. <clears throat> the first part is this, is you need to understand that the tools we teach you in this program are not prescriptive. And one of the reasons is because there's no prescriptive way to be excellent from a communication standpoint because you need to communicate in different contexts. And different contexts demand different things from your communication. So number one is you need a tool set that allows you to flex the delivery of a message, to flex your strategy so that it can fit within the context that you are in. So when we're talking about a distinct culture within an organization, one of the common things we always talk about that I always tell people is this. A, Understand that that context fixes some of the things you can do, but you can push boundaries. And so when you think about employing the tools and we think about making ourselves memorable and have impact and resonate, one of the things we can think about is the more I understand the culture of my organization, the more I can understand where those outer limits are that I can push those boundaries and not go so far that I'm sort of moving people to a place where they're not focusing on my message anymore, right? So what's that limit that I can go to? And over time, you do it enough and you have enough success and those boundaries continue to slip further and further outward. The second piece that's a really important principle to have is context dictates everything. I can teach you all the rules, all the tips, all the science, every best practice possible. But if you walk into your corporate boardroom and the board expects you to put up a slide that has numerous spreadsheets and data printed so small that no one can see it, you better do it no matter how many times Adam, Penny, or I tell you not to. The context dictates everything. So you have to sort of be able to walk that fine line between those two. Where can I push the limit? And where do I have to say, this is just what the expectation is for me to get business done? Great. Thanks, Richard. Uh, there's a question from the live stream, which I'll take. Uh, does having a clear brand purpose help in communicating efficiently? Uh, not only efficiently, also effectively. Having a purpose, um, which I would, uh, I would relate to that in storytelling terms to having a great theme, that there is some big, great idea, a purpose, a purpose statement, uh, a mission statement, something that moves up to that highest level of importance for you, the people you're talking to, maybe the company or the companies that you're working with, to have your message aligned with that big brand purpose is essential because if there are concerns and questions, if you are always aligned with that purpose, you can always sort of go up to that purpose and say, this is how it works with the purpose. And it's the reason why it's important to do this. That's also very important. If there's sometimes when you have to give bad news or there's, uh, or, or there's something that might be difficult, there might be challenges, there might be a significant investment that your company needs to make in order to leap ahead, but it's hard to decide to make that investment. If you can align that with the core principles and the, and the core purpose of why you are all here right now, 
you have a much better chance of having a better hearing and a much better opportunity to get to yes. I'm going to scroll down and see if we have any other questions. Okay, so uh, over in the chat bar for people who have been asking, how do you get the link? How do you register for the program? You sign up uh, right there. Uh, we've put it into the group chat for everybody. A, a, a person with appropriate skepticism says, does this really work on Zoom? Uh, I will also answer that one. We've been doing this on Zoom. Uh, and it works wonderfully on Zoom. In fact, there are some ways it works, the, it works even better because of the level of interaction that you're able to have with your classmates when we move into breakout groups. Also, right now, we're on Zoom because people, we're on Zoom. This is how we're going to be. And so it is appropriate that you enjoy this training and you benefit from this training in the medium that you will need to be using to present what you need to present. It may be a long time before you can go into that room with other people live. And again, even if the lockdown eases and you can go in next month, you may be back into Zoom. So this is a skill that we all need to have right now that we need to hone, perfect, improve. Um, that's the reason why we're taking this to Zoom. Um, even when we can go live again, we may keep doing this in Zoom because Zoom is going to become a normal business modality as normal as writing emails, in my opinion. So uh, it works in Zoom and it's important to do it in Zoom. And, you know, and if I may just say, also say, I think it's a really great investment in yourself and in your career. It's an investment of three days, uh, really two and a half days. It's an investment of some money. But when you think about the return on that investment for your capacity to communicate effectively in this medium, and also when we're out of Zoom in a room, you'll still get that. It's a great investment in yourself and up-leveling your skills, your game, your career, your presence. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions. I don't see any I other questions at the moment. But uh, Penny, it looks like you want to say something. Will you yes. please chime in? Yes, I do. We are very much skills-based. I teach skills that if you do this, that is going to happen. It's not airy-fairy, it's not hit or miss. So you will leave after these three days, and you can come in that second day if you, if you, do, if you want to get some more information from me. You will be leaving with skills so that if something doesn't work for you on Zoom communication, and it's to do with the presence and voice, you can go back to what I taught you because it's because you didn't do something in this sequencing. And I know with Richard and, and Adam, it's also we believe that form gives you freedom. When there's no form, you get chaos and you're all over the show. So my work, yes, you're going to have these very solid skills and then you have to practice it. That's how you take it further um, and, and make it work for you. Richard, do you have a final thought to leave people with today? You know, I, I think Adam, I would just reiterate with what you said. I think it's an investment in oneself right now. I think that the world is in the Zoomiverse. We will continue to be so. These tools, these frameworks, like Penny just said, are, are meant to allow you to shine in a way that is unique to you. Uh, there is no one way to be excellent communicatively. There is no one model you should follow. It's about finding how you do your best and how you shine as a unique person as a communicator. And it's about how these tools, how these frameworks, how these empirical exercises and skills allow that to shine. And I'll just say to everybody here on Zoom and in YouTube Live, uh, Somebody asked a question about purpose. There's a purpose that Penny, Richard, and I have. We teach this program as an act of love. We love doing this. We love sharing what we have learned, what we have the capacity to share with you, because we believe that when good-hearted people who are of strong intention and great purpose have the capacity to communicate and present better, then we make the world a better place.
And that's why we do what we do. So uh, with that, we're going to sign off. Thank you all for being here, joining us. Uh, for those who are watching the, uh, the recording, thank you for watching the recording. We hope to see many of you in this class and in future classes. If you have further questions, please reach out to the people at Berkeley Executive Education. They would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you all, and for whatever time zone you are in, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Take care.